Thank you, everybody, for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. We're really honored um, that you're interested in what we're doing, and we're also really interested in what you're doing. So that's kind of the purpose of this event is to get all of those folks in the same space and um, be able to have some discussion and share ideas and uh, talk about how to collaborate and uh, and widen what this project is. So thank you for coming. Um, we um, so for those of y'all that are that are outside of the area, we're we're in San Antonio, Texas, which is the traditional homelands of the Estocana or the Carizo Come Crudo tribe of Texas, and also the Tapilam Coateca Nation. We're on occupied native land. Um, do you want to introduce yourself first, and then I can introduce myself? I'll, by all means. I'm Marisol Cortez, <laughs> and I'm a, a writer primarily, um, but also a community-based scholar and the co-editor of Deceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg Harmon, uh, and kind of got this thing started years ago. We'll do a little bit of the history of it, and I'm very fortunate that uh, I am partnered up uh, with Marisol. I work with the Sierra Club. That's like my full-time organizing job. My background is in I don't know if there's the spot for that, but environmental journalism, uh, and I've done that in a lot of different places and venues. <clears throat> um, it's kind of all one story, though, isn't it? Um, and so excited to be looking at this as an alternative form of community mobilization and and organizing uh, to use those tools this way. Mm -hmm. So um, um, we're also really excited that we have a number of our community advisors mm -hmm. here with us to uh have the conversation about deceleration. Um, so I wanted to ask, I'll just go in the order that I see them in the little window. Die, if you wanna say something about yourself and um, yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm Di Rios. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm the um, community relations coordinator and center manager for EcoCentro, which is the uh, center for sustainability and San Antonio. Uh, and I'm so proud to join on as well as a community advisor for deceleration. Um, uh, what I do, um, I'm, I'm right in the between the worlds of digital media and uh, environmental stewardship. So uh, I'm so uh, proud and lucky that pretty much everything I do is geared in, in one realm or the other or, or kind of both. And so uh, bringing my skills together with uh, multimedia and um, uh, using that to do some storytelling about um, our environment, our steward and stewardship, and so uh, that that's a lot of the the work that I do. So I'm I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Di. Let's see, Nadia. I see you next. Hi, my name is Nadia Galena, and um, uh, for my day job, I'm a community health worker at Metro Health Healthy Neighborhoods Program. Um, I work on the South Side as a community health worker there, and um, I really love doing that work. Um, been doing that for the last, uh, I guess, almost six years now. Um, and before that, I was doing a lot of um, activism work around, um, you know, food security, and I'm still doing that to, you know, do, with my day job. But um, and uh, community organizing around uh, food systems uh, through San Antonio Permaculture, which is a group I, start, well, I started with um, Diana Lopez and Brian Gordon in around 2014, 2015. So um, we used to do a lot of um, classes, a lot of community education, um, skill sharing, and um, you know, big events to um, help uh, learn about permaculture and work together to um, have more sustainable and regenerative systems in the community. And um, I'm also a mom of um, a big boy. He's 20 years old already. Oh and God. yeah, it's pretty old, right? And uh, yeah, that, that's about it. I just, I love, um, you know, being outside and, and, you know, having my hands in the soil. Sometimes it's really hard to do that, uh, you know, working, I'm doing a lot of stuff, you know, with people now. So I really like uh, just being able to work in my garden and, uh, you know, reconnect in that way. I'm really, really honored to uh, be here um, working with this deceleration and Marisol and Greg. I've admired their work for um, such a long time. And um, I just think this is a really great thing that we're doing now. Likewise, likewise for your work as well, Thank Nadia. You. Thank you. 
Uh, let's see, I see Kenny next. Hey everyone, um, I'm Kenny Walker. I'm kind of uh, deep in the piney woods right now for a variety of reasons. So if my, if my video is a bit slow, I apologize. I'll try to do <laughs> the best I can with the minimal bandwidth that I have here. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm thrilled to be a cute advisor for deceleration. Um, I'm a scholar, academic. I'm a father. I work at UTSA, um, mostly doing work in environmental, in humanities and environmental humanities and environmental justice. So when I was doing some of the research for um, my book that's coming out, Climate Politics on the Border, it's coming out in the fall. Um, I was really looking at histories of human responses to extreme weather and in San Antonio, right? And especially in light of contemporary climate science. And so really, um, you know, that led me to some of Marisol and Greg's work, of course, right? Because I really saw the book as just a small contribution to what has been a long ongoing conversation in San Antonio about environmental justice. And it's really clear to me that these kinds of projects like what Diesel has going on is allowing us to think more deeply, but act more quickly. To, 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 to try and address the catastrophes that we are all, that we're all feeling. Um, you know, the end of COVID is just the beginning, right? Um, I think we, we all can feel that. So, you know, I'm trying to do nature culture justice work at all levels. And I see D-Cell is very much al aligned with that, um, combining the cultural work of artists, of scholars, the people who are doing it on the everyday level to the political work of activism and publics and policy change. Um, right. No one's coming to save us. We've got to do this work ourselves and we've got to do it here and now. And so I'm just extremely proud to be part of this um, community and to contribute in whatever way I can. I really see DCEL as a hub, a consortium of environmental justice work across South Texas that is both theoretically informed, but also uh, has great local news. Um, you know, so really giving us the information we need. And I think it can and sort of has a, a, a contribution to a long history of, of environmental work in San Antonio that tries to shatter what Rodolfo Rosales called our illusions of inclusion. And also to decarbonize as the work of doing um, our reckoning with colonialism and, and toward more justice, right? And so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, we, you know, we have, I have some grant-based projects where, where our D-cell has been included on this. And, you know, I just have a big commitment to this kind of work ahead. So thrilled to be here. Thrilled to meet Di and Nadia and some of the other community advisors. Thanks to everyone who's here. I look forward to the conversation. Thank you, Kenny. And I think we had a, a couple, we have a couple more folks on our, our board of community advisors um, that couldn't make it today. Um, Diana Lopez is, um, she's a longtime environmental justice activist. She's the executive director of Southwest Workers Union, which is where I met her um, many years ago, actually how I met Greg too. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, but yeah, she sends her regrets that she can't make it. And then Enrique Valdivia, I met like 20 years ago. Um, fighting PGA. Fighting PGA, which was a professional golf association resort. <laughs> proposed over the Edwards Aquifer, which they did build, although it's not called PGA. Um, but yeah, Enrique is, um, he's an attorney uh, who, who, who does a lot of um, uh, like legal justice advocacy work. He's a longtime water justice um, activist here. So um, am I leaving anybody out? That's everybody's on with us so far. That's a, if, if anybody's interested in engaging at a level of a community advisory level, let us know. Uh, we can pick up that conversation. We're honored to have uh, this kind of collection of community uh, learning so much from all of them already. Um, and that's really kind of projects like kind of like we are imagining that this may be contributing to uh, only only work when there is that a, a, a a, um, a group uh, agreement a and a collective hold it, holding that space right. and um, holding each other. So just a real kind of loose structure um, for today, uh, pretty basic. We'll talk a little bit about who we are, some of what we're trying to do, our vision. Um, we'll hear more from you um, about what you work on and what brings you here today. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you know, most of the time, half of the time at least can be um, just more discussion mm -hmm. like we would have at an in-person gathering. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll do over here. 
Yeah, we're here. We're, we'll do kind of like the top of the the top of the call with with the, your indulgence and your patience, just kind of like setting up uh, setting up the the call uh, and talking a little bit about about deceleration. Um, but I think what interests and excites us more than that is the conversation that we can start bringing people in and say, well, this is useful. That's not useful. This is what I'm doing and what I want to try to realize, you know, a year from now uh, and looking for ways that we can be doing complementary work uh, and supporting each other. Uh, if there, if there's redundancies, if there's another organization, if there's somebody else that's got, you know, X, Y, Z is handled, it's off of our plate. That's great. And we can promote, promote it. Right. Um, so just for the purpose of this call, and I don't, you know, we, 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 we function in a lot of different spaces and, and, and I do a lot of climate work uh, here in San Antonio and coalition. Uh, and uh, most of the the meetings we start off with some kind of norms, right? Where we're saying, and and we have some very very simple ones for this meeting. Uh, we don't anticipate like I mean, it's I think a question came up one time. You're like, well, does anybody ever really like just like launch off in some kind of like crazy racist tirade? And it's like, no, but it's good to check in with each other regularly and say, well, you know what, this is acceptable and that's not. And if we want to have a conversation about what that means in terms of an agreed norm. Then, then it's a cool opportunity to do that. But basically for the purposes of this call, just a couple of norms. One is like just a very, very zero tolerance for, for racism, um, for misogyny, for uh, homo transphobia, um, any of that kind of stuff. You may get a back channel like um, a message. Somebody, one of our board uh, supporters, advisors may ping you and say, hmm, uh, or it may just be part of our, our conversation. But we want these to be agreed norms. So if, if, if anything doesn't sound right, then, then let us know right away. Um, we do want to encourage folks who are not uh, used to being uh, engaging in a group conversation, being at the center of one or uh, uh, speaking you know, uh, in front of folks to, to try it out. Um, we may call on folks if, if we don't hear from you. Uh, we don't want to put anybody on the spot, but we definitely want, we know that some people are really, really comfortable speaking. I speak a lot in a lot of public settings um, and, and, and I have to always constantly be checking myself. So if you're kind of like me and you're used, you're kind of, you kind of like occupying these work in spaces of quote unquote power or, or political, you know, recognize whatever, go to city council a lot or committee meetings a lot you may want to just say, why am I talking right now? And, and, and is this germane to what we're doing? Is this important? And who isn't talking? And maybe invite them in. Um, uh, another would be just one mic. Um, we all have control over our mics um, and people can come on and come off uh, at will. But what I'm asking uh, for, for this call is if you want to get on stack uh, to speak, you want to contribute, then put your hand, use, use your hand. If anybody doesn't know, um, you can go down to the bottom of, is this on here? Should be. Anyway, you can raise your hand or- like in reactions, right? Is it in reactions? Pretty sure. Yeah, in yeah. reactions, use your hand, put your hand up. Uh, or in the chat, just type stack, S-T-A-C-K. Um, yeah, good. Um, and uh, we'll try to try to keep track of that. And maybe if uh, if someone else can kind of just be aware we miss somebody feel free to come off my mute and say you know greg you know what's you know what's wrong with you it's been five minutes this person's been waiting to say something um the advisors uh i've been invited in as co-hosts to to operate the mics uh if they see somebody is just like just you know coming out and being kind of disrespectful and maybe attacking somebody or whatever they may mute your mic or they may, may boot somebody from the meeting they've been invited to kind of like serve in that in that role, um, and remember, uh, one one of the norms that that I I like is 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 to be reminded that when we're engaging and we're talking about like these are heavy topics, right? Collapse, global collapse is a heavy topic. Extinction is a heavy topic. You know, not just our own, but but all of these around us, um, and it's hard and it's painful and it's emotional. So. Um, Remember that it's about, these are ideas we're talking about. And someone may have a different idea, but it's not about them, right? So we're not attacking each other. We're not debating each other. We're, we're, we're thinking and we're sharing, we're, we're discussing ideas. So ideas, not individuals. Just a couple of things too. It is an open house, so feel free to um, come and go. You know, you gotta 
get some food yeah, or sure. use the bathroom or you have little ones underfoot and you need to address what they're doing. Um, yeah, just it's it'll be hopefully relaxed and formal um, in that way. Uh, I think we mentioned we will be we are recording this and we'll probably post it later to YouTube and Facebook so that people that maybe wanted to come but didn't weren't able to catch the live event uh, can see the conversation. So if anybody is uncomfortable, um, mm -hmm. just you know turn off your video. That's that's totally fine. Um, I want to ask. I want to ask about that. It's a small enough group. Is there anybody that uh, would participate in a substantially different way if this was not going to be a public document or a public record? Now's your chance to test out that hand raise button. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to sacrifice kind of like something really substantial um, for the sake of kind of like the familiar, which to us is a digital life. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. So yeah, later on we'll um, we'll turn it over to y'all and hear come at some of, some of the ideas that you came to this space with. And um, so yeah, if you want to start thinking now, making some notes uh, later on, there'll be a, a chance for you to to share that with us. Um, but what we wanted to do first was just talk a little bit about the history of um, deceleration and kind of how that shaped the vision that we have for the, this project um, going into the future. Uh, I'll let Greg talk about kind of how it got started and then I'll jump in. Yeah, and I'll be sort of brief, just recognizing that we're already like 15 minutes over like what we had, like our, our planned um, agenda. Uh, but 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 deceleration, um, it, it's it's really, it's, it's, it's sweet, satisfying, it's it's really satisfying to me that that it was it was the word you know that 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 came up when it did it the site itself it lives on bones that were uh, first put up uh, when it must have been like two thousand and eight and I was working as an alternative media you know reporter uh, the internet was doing the thing that the internet was doing and newspapers legacy media were like no one knew what to do and reporters. And writers were being encouraged, you know, uh, make yourself space online, you know, keep keep track of your stories, take ownership, branding was something, you know, brand yourself, be this. And so I started this essentially a page just to hold my stories. Um, and and then it became something where I would blog, you know, like I was covering something about, you know, radioactive waste. And so I'd add documents here that maybe they didn't fit on the, uh, at the time it was the San Antonio Current that I was writing for. Um, and, and it's, and I, and I think I mentioned that only to say that, you know, for folks tooling around on it, something really obscure and old might pop up in a search. And that's why um, we have a lot of work to do to kind of like, uh, to, 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 to kind of like have it like functioning in the way that I think we, we really uh, want it to be. Um, but it, that exercise was actually really useful in that uh, we were at a period where, there, you know, a lot of the, the news uh, papers, I worked for the paper in Gulfport, Mississippi for a while, and I did a story about um, Agent Orange exposure, you know, decades later, there had been a, it, it's funny how, how poor, um, how poor of a job um, media does sometimes, and I'm reminded of a comment that a publisher, a friend of mine, uh, one time they, someone asked him about, you know, aren't you worried you get in trouble, you know, for, you know, for, for the stuff you put in the paper. Um, and he said, you know, or something like that. And he said, you know, it's not what you put in the paper. It's what you keep out. <laughs> right. And that was a small town, you know, I mean, that was honesty, right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't end up in print, um, for that reason, right. That because of the, the, uh, the, they, the institutional media or this, uh, doesn't want to take take that right or take the hit and in the paper i was working at in gulfport uh you know this cb base down there that's where i, mean, I think the majority of the agent orange in the u.s went out uh uh into the into the gulf and was incinerated and it was stored there it was a it was a i think a ship point for um going out to vietnam and, and all the rest and so I got into, uh, just real briefly, I got into basically just these big old binders at the library telling the story, you know, I mean, all these like Navy records. 
uh, and I found references to community health workers, Nadia, um, who were hired by the Navy to go door to door on the base and interview people about stillbirths, about um, uh, malformed uh, babies, about uh, you know, on and on and on. It was so bad that the people doing those community health surveys had to get treated psycholog psychological treatment. And none of this had ever come out in the local media. Uh, and so it was one of those stories that it came out, the AP didn't, wouldn't pick it up. Um, and I can't tell you why. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the story. It was absolutely, you know, based upon <laughs> really, really, really reliable data that most people who are there understood. Um, but that became kind of like the top story on the blog, right? Because it was hidden behind a paywall on this obscure coast Gulf, you know, Mississippi Gulf Coast paper uh, where nobody could get at it. And so now it's on my site and now the keywords and the internet and Google and, 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 and all this stuff all of a sudden it's on like these, like, you know, anyway, a lot of veterans, a lot of uh, injured families and, and hurt people. So um, that was when I kind of like realized, oh, like even though it's just this little project that I'm doing, um, it that is impactful uh, in people's lives um, and uh, shame on the, everybody else who, who didn't have this free access top of thing. So, Anyway, so I I, um, I got out of media uh, in 2012, end of 12, early 13. Um, I went through kind of a real mental health, uh, just went through the ringer. I had a long history, a lifelong like diagnosed like depression or panic or this or that. And then I hit this, I hit this moment. I was working as an editor at the at the alt paper here, and everything, every symptom like I'd ever experienced, just like like, you know, like dove into the huddle, right? And, and it just blew up. And it took me a couple of years to really, a number of years to really kind of rebalance and recalibrate. Um, and I think out of that experience, I've really started thinking about uh, reporting in terms of chronicling. Like I, I, I was, there was, a, there was a time that I was writing a lot about climate change, believing that if I just wrote it, if I just said it, if I just said it, if I just wrote it in the facts and the science and this and that, that it would just like things would change. Um, and so you just write harder, right? Mm -hmm. And think we, and we know that that isn't what, like facts aren't what motivate people. Um, and I think it's been something that the environmental, you know, uh, reporting community uh, has really struggled with, that activists have struggled with. Um, and so coming back around to this project, I really just, you know, I began to ask a lot of questions about, you know, well, what would it be and how, what would it look like and what's the purpose? And, and it's, it's, and I think we're going to unpack a little bit about that and some of the assumptions that have gone into it. Um, and hopefully there's some corrective or some direction that, that we can get out of this call. Um, but I would say that to come around to, 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 when it finally like flipped, I, I ended up before I, I, was, I was, I was, you know, basically disabled for a number of years and just gradually began freelancing again. I was doing stuff for like the Guardian or a Texas, a Texas Observer or um, like a Cranes, like a business green, you know, business press or whatever. Um, uh, any number of like uh, Texas climate news. I was uh, a contributing editor there for a while, a couple of years. Um, and and eventually I had to go back to school and I had to like, like, just like, just, I needed time off to think about all of this. And so I went into an international relations program here in town, um, specifically to, uh, to really, um, think about from a global perspective, um, uh, these, these colliding ecological crises, um, as well as in this program, they have a, a, a peacemaking track or a conflict transformation track. Uh, and within that, then there's this, uh, there's this other, there's a school of journalism called peace journalism. And essentially what, what that is, or the theory of that is that if we as journalists plant seeds in the questions that we're asking that allow conflicting parties, you know, allow them to access the imaginary, right? What does peace look like? What would conflict transformation look like? You just, you're planting seeds. So there's, there's something inside of all that, that that, that where I ended up with this name deceleration. Um, and, I, and, and I've only more recently come to understand that what it really means in, um, in an active um, struggle, uh, in an anti-fascist struggle, 
um, with those who consider themselves accelerationists, um, which is the movement to bring on race war, but, you know, uh, to bring on ultimate global, you know, disturbance uh, for the rise of a global fascist state. Um, and uh, that could be from the high tech, the Silicon Valley side. It could be from you know the Trump, Trump, you know minions or whatever. Uh, so it's really, it feels good to have that word on the site right now um, because is 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 a direct. Uh, that's a direct resistance, but it's also a softer um, way into a conversation um, about new new models of being and 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 into degrowth. And I'll let Marisol pick it up from there. Yeah. So how I got involved with deceleration. Um, Greg had drafted, so kind of around the time that he was describing 2015, 2016, he was doing this program. He had drafted this little blurb with the mission and vision for something called deceleration. Um, and that really read, that word re resonated with my own trajectory and my in, and interests. Um, so part of my, um, part of my training is academic, uh, I'm, Kind of like Kenny, I'm, I'm trained in the environmental humanities. Um, so thinking about nature, culture, power relationships, but more from the perspective, not so much from the, the science side, but more from the kind of thinking about how do our ideas contribute to like how we relate to nature uh, in a relationship of domination or a relationship of protection or whatnot. Um, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to come home. I, I had kind of realized I didn't want to do a traditional academic career. I wanted to come back to San Antonio. And more specifically, I wanted to figure out how to apply my training in more community or, or social movement building spaces. Um, and so I did. I came home about 10 years ago and I worked uh, full time as a community organizer for a variety of organizations, mostly around environmental justice, which is what um, a lot of the work that I had done be before I went into academia, before I went to grad school. Um, had been about, but but also when I came back home, it, it ended up being a, a lot of work around displacement and gentrification, um, because that's that was what was happening when I came back home. Those were the sort of big sites of struggle, um, and sort of the politics of development, which drive both the environmental stuff, environmental justice stuff, and the displacement stuff. And so I really started thinking about those issues around displacement and gentrification, especially at, from an environmental justice perspective, like as land struggles, as urban struggles over the right to place, the right to remain. And from there, deeper even to thinking about the land itself as having right, a right to remain, a right to exist, a right to survive and to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And that led me to read a lot of stuff um, kind of in different, slightly different fields than I had been, than I had been reading in like as, a, as an academic. I started to read more political geography, political ecology, um, feminist geography, especially um, a lot of critiques of development as a paradigm, as the way, like the only kind of way we think about how you produce social well-being. Oh, we just need to develop more. We need more economic development. And well, what does that even mean? You know, where does that idea come from? Um, I read a lot of indigenous critiques of that paradigm. Um, development really is this idea that comes out of a certain colonial way of re relating to land and to each other. Um, I read a lot about movements in the global south, often indigenous led, um, that were proposing alternatives to development. So not just you know green development, not just sustainable development, not just sustainability, but like an alternative to development altogether. Um, a lot of uh, and in the movements in in indigenous movements in Latin America, people talk about um, sumac cause, um, which is. I was going to put that in a chat, but then I could, I lost the spelling. It's S U M A K. I knew that part. Yeah. And then K A W S A Y which gets translated into Spanish as buen vivir, mm -hmm. which is basically like the question of, of what is good living that is both in harmony with, uh, that has social justice to it, people being in harmony with each other, but also what we would call environmental justice to it, like people being in right relationship to, to la madre tierra, right? That we depend on. Um, and then in the global North, and that kind of took me to, um, 
the literature and the movement around degrowth mm -hmm. uh, in the global north. Um, that's sort of like the flip side of Buen Vivi in the south would be degrowth in the north, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we can't get to that Buen Vivi, we can't get to that harmony between each other and be in between us and nature until we address you know, these econo economic systems, social systems, political systems that have been built on colonialism, white supremacy, you know, patriarchal domination of, of people oppressed by gender, of the land. So, um, so yeah, I got really interested in kind of like, what is, po what is post growth? What, is, uh, what does that mean? And how can that really frame some of the work that, that we're already doing? Like, mm, there's no need to really import a notion of sumat kause, which is specific to like Andean peoples because here in San Antonio or wherever you are, there are people that are struggling, uh, have their own like land specific or cultural specific ways of seeking that, that right living in relationship to others and to nature. And um, for me, degrowth is a really powerful way to think about a lot of the development politics that happen in San Antonio because that is really, when we fight uh, the tearing down of historic building, or when we fight uh, the PGA Golf Village, when we fight the Vista Ridge Pipeline, when we fight the expansion of the South Texas nuclear project, uh, when we fight, you know, it's always the same forces. It's it's a certain idea of, I mean, it's 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 it, it's it's people in high places, right? And the power that they have and economic power, but also it's this beyond that, it's this idea that to the only way that we can have a good life is to grow more to um, economic growth is how you is how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, economic development, if we have more economic development, we're gonna lift the boat for everybody. Um, and so I think that's, you know, I we're already kind of doing that work here. And so for me, it's it's just a matter of like, how can people understand that framework a little better? How can they see that what they're doing is actually connected to like what a lot of people are doing all over the world um, so that our work here can be stronger and more effective. Um, but then, you know, I think, oh, and I was gonna- Degrowth distinct from sustainability. Cool. Yeah. You want to put a pin on it? Yeah, let me let me put a pin on that. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna put a pin on that. But it's gonna be a good pin. Well, I will answer really quickly. I think sustainability as an idea came from the idea that we can still have growth or we can still have and when I say growth, I don't mm -hmm. I don't mean population, I mean economic growth, I mean GDP, I mean more more profit you know, that we can still have profit, we can still have economic growth, we can still make GDP go up, we can have more economic development and also protect the planet. And degrowth would reject that and say, no, actually we need to mm -hmm. have an entirely different uh, economic organization around um, care, around an ethic of care and relationships of care, um, which too often in an economy of growth gets devalued or erased. Uh, that's a great question. I think we're going to dig into that a little bit. Yeah, but um, I, I did want to post a couple of links to some videos if I, yeah, so that I can, um, so I don't take up too much time. Um, oh, I'll, I'll be sharing these. Um, and uh, so you go right ahead and I'll just. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of like how, that's why the, the concept of deceleration or like that's where, how it resonated with me um, when Greg kind of brought it to me. And um, but on a personal level, I mean, I think, you know, Greg talked about sort of the breakdown that he experienced and hitting a wall and having to figure out how to do things differently. Like I had a similar experience, um, of, I mean, what, in my case, what, what a lot of what caused me to hit that wall, like mentally and also physically was, uh, was triggered by the certain style of community organizing that, uh, that I think really does often, and, and it's not you know any one particular organization. It's in a lot of organizations, but just uh, you know, it, it if crisis is urgent, then we always want to be doing things like harder, faster, more of it, bigger. Um, 
you know, it's, it really kind of like internalizes this logic of like, of growth and um, kind of never ending, never enoughness, right? Which makes a lot of assumptions about what an ideal activist is, you know, you're able-bodied, you're, you're young, you don't have any family to take care of, um, you don't have any caregiving responsibilities. So, uh, you know, and that, that was really, I found that really destructive. Um, and so in addition to kind of the political and the intellectual resonance of the idea of deceleration, uh, just on a personal level, like mental health wellness level, like deceleration was also this idea that spoke to this personal shift that I needed mm -hmm. to make in, in my praxis and the way that and the way that I was responding politically to, to crisis because we have to respond, but do we have to respond in this way that also burn makes you burn out or mm -hmm. does damage to yourself or does damage to other people? So it's a, um, it's, a, it's a deceleration is about the big engines, like the big engines of industry growth and extraction. It's also kind of a reminder and a reference and a encouragement to our, and to our, to ourselves and to our uh, relations with one another. Yeah. Like in a lot of degrowth literature, they talk about like decolonizing our imaginary, like getting rid of that, growth logic, that profit logic, that extraction logic, like in our own thinking. And that includes the way that we live activism or the way that we do organizing. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where our trajectories, our interests converged um, and specifically around this vision of, of, of creating a community space. And in this case, it, it's just the, doing the work of like writing or publication um, that could provide coverage of environmental justice news, like in this bioregion, um, but also put that coverage into um, like a, a larger perspective, whether that's global or theoretical, you know, making these ties to ideas from around the world that have bearing on what we're doing here and what we're seeing so that we can go to the roots in our analysis, we go to the roots of what is creating crisis, but also expand our imaginations or political imaginations for what solutions look like, um, not just to be kind of like, always kind of constantly talking about all of the horrible catastrophes that are piling up, but like, um, you know, I think something that's really important to both of us is like, with, with this project is how do we shift from always fighting back, fighting back, fighting back, and like spinning our wheels, going to city council, yelling at them, <laughs> to how do we take that energy? And, um, and what are we saying yes to? Mm -hmm. What, um, how do we fight forward mm -hmm. as well as fight back? And how do we take some, take back some of that energy that we spend on these people mm -hmm. and institutions yeah, uh, that we spend in resistance um, and put it into building like actual lived on the ground networks for, for taking care of each other and for taking care of the planet. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the big vision. Um, of deceleration and and we wanted to uh maybe have open it up to the board a little bit yeah if there's uh we did it with introductions earlier and um i'd love to hear uh if anybody uh from the the community advisor is would want to kind of like step in and see how what that word how what deceleration as a as a as a, as a concept or as an as, as an initiative what's called what called you in what what element of what kind of myself or, or Marisol's message called you in? Uh, I'll go ahead and speak. So uh, I think for me, uh, at first it was kind of, I was trying to wrap my head around what is deceleration, what is degrowth. And uh, for me, what it speaks to is, you know, early we were, we were talking about economic growth and, you know, how there's, there's a lot of emphasis and value placed on economic growth, especially in capitalist societies. And, uh, but uh, oftentimes that value and that emphasis overtakes the importance of equity for our communities, right? Uh, the phrase that sticks with me often is think lo globally, act locally. And so, uh, you know, when we when we do this storytelling for, uh, you know, issues that happen at the local level and and not just issues, but also the, the positives, what we're saying yes to, what are the uh, community building things that are happening at the local level, that's, um, one of the many ways that we um, build equity and build community together. And so that uh, uh, that component in particular, but 
is really what draws me in as far as the importance for uh, deceleration and also to speak to that um, mental health component that uh, you know there's not you know nobody's making millions of dollars doing this kind of work right and it's always a struggle to you know find funding for these things or to uh, you know there's a uh, it, like it's it's not necessarily like I said you know buying into the um, all of the capitalist culture of making millions of dollars to try to do this type of work so uh, because it's um, usually underfunded or not funded it's easy to burn yourself out um, trying to do all the things at once right and so um, you know that I appreciate that the the concept of deep growth and deceleration is to um, uh, you know, building equity and community at our local level and also um, reminding ourselves of what um, what we can do individually is uh, is great, but also what we can do together as a community uh, builds our strength in numbers. Thank you, Di. Yeah, did Nadia or Kenny? You don't have to, yeah. but if you, but if you, have, if you feel yeah. moved to say something about it, you can. Um, I just, I think, um, pretty much the thing that's, that's brought me to, or, or, or drawn me in is, um, just, you know, everything that y'all were saying just really resonated. Um, you know, particularly the burnout and the familiarity of the way we work in, in these organizations that are, you know, we're all like really well-intentioned, right. And we all like, you know, want to do what we can to, to improve things in our society and our community. Um, but we fall into those same patterns that are so destructive. Um, and I, you know, kind of similarly, uh, in my own like, uh, work, uh, dealing with like the mental health aspects of that and really thinking if, I really want to, you know, be able to to make these changes and to be the change you want to see. These are the things that I have to be able to do at home. I have to figure out how do I, you know, slow things down, focus, figure out what my values are, and figure out how to work together with other people. Because my natural tendency is like, you know, let's just all get along. You know, we've got to like, you know, start working together and we've got to get shit done. You know, but I mean, how are we going to do that if we have all of these uh, things that we're dealing with, all of these traumas? you know, we really have to take some time um, to figure things out. And it's really difficult within the, the structure and the system that we're in, especially like with like the nonprofit industrial complex and all those things that are like, you know, you have to um, do this amount of work within, you know, this fiscal year. And it's like, how are we ever going to really be able to measure the changes and, and put that on a report within this span of time? It's, it's really difficult. I think we really, I, I just love uh, working with other people who get that. And um, so that we can really try and work together to um, to, to take that on and, and, and shift things in that regard. So thank you all. Thank you, Nadia. Can we have Denise? Because I see yeah, her hand. Uh, well, we had invited Kenny in. Kenny, did you want to speak to that? And we've got one person on stack, I think. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you. And I'll just, I'll, I'll say a couple of things really quickly. Deceleration resonated as a concept, um, you know, for me in a, in a lot of different ways. And so I really appreciate hearing the background of where it, of where it came from and also how's it, how it resonated with both of you. You know, for me, it was a desire to connect academics to community-based work and, the, the, and, and to address the large failure of the academy to engage in community-based work in ways that are ethical and the ways that can provide support to some community right um, organizations while also not you know um, sort of being too overbearing but instead working with and so you know when i found when i found your all's work and and found that thesis it clearly resonated with my own work but also it, it filled this need for me to connect academics to community organizing and um, so it's really, I mean, and you know, every time I hang out with you guys, right, it just resonates, right? And so, I'm, you know, there's all of that. Um, and, and then for me, you know, the, the thesis of GDP to care is really central to how we have to rethink our own everyday lives all the way to global economies. And if anything, the pandemic has done for me, it's done a lot, obviously, it's, it's crazy, but we're so entangled with the global economy. I think we have to really be be careful about the way we talk about local development in ways that don't address the right the the, the imperial trap of just thinking about the local, right? Um, and so 
it's such a fascinating thesis and it's so clear to me that we have to really think deeply and slowly and carefully while also moving somewhat um, with some exigence, right? And addressing some of these crises. So, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'll just say that, um, you know, I think these conversations are absolutely vital and necessary, even though they're difficult and don't often come to, okay, now we're gonna do this and solve this issue right here and now. And sometimes that does happen. But um, for me, you know, connecting academics much more to community organizing around the thesis of deceleration um, was really moving. And so I thank you all for, for that and, and for the you know, community that you all built here. Thank you. Yeah, and I would say just this is happening. Yeah, no, oh, Denise, um, I think had had their hand up, but I want to recognize that this event is happening um, because of a call. I think you were on. I think it was Nadia. I can't remember. It was Die, but someone said, "You know what? We should just have an open house and we should just talk about these ideas because the conversation we were having, I think, was like serving uh, was so satisfying." to those few of us on the call that, that it took us a little while to put it together, but we have so much gratitude for, for all of you uh, and, and for so many of the folks on the call that, that haven't even come into the conversation yet. But um, Denise had their hand up and then I think we, we're um, gonna have a, a, a quick conversation about the site itself. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I um, actually, Kenny um, really articulated almost exactly how um, how the term deceleration um, resonated with me. I mean, I, I see, you know, thinking, you know, philosophically, I just see the society going so fast, um, just feeding past its ability to control its direction. Um, and um, the idea of just slowing down and getting some control over our own destiny, just as a society, I think that that has been um, something that I've been, you know, when you're looking around at what's going on, you can just see how out of control we are, um, the dangers that are exponentially growing because of our lack of control of, of you know, how we're moving around in this world. And so I am just really anxious to uh, meet with people who are thinking about that, thinking about, you know, solutions to some of these threats and issues that we're facing. Um, and I really like the idea of people from, you know, varying skill sets and life experiences coming together to share their knowledge. Um, so really, honestly, that's, that's um, what's calling me to this conversation. And just to, it's so refreshing, you know, I've been working on this project for a very long time about corruption and it's very disheartening when you see the level of um, corruption that has, you know, basically threatened every aspect, all of our institutions, every aspect of our communities. And so for me, having to deal with lawyers constantly, watching the way that they maneuver and manipulate uh, our communities, um, it, it's just really, for me, very refreshing to listen to meet and see people who actually care about the community. Um, I wish and hope that I can do something to contribute to the raising of your voices uh, so that we can, um, and lower some of the voices that are really dictating how we're moving about as a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's non-cooperation comes to mind <laughs> more, and more and more. Right. You know, like digging right. I'm like, I spent a lot of time, right, running yeah, around exactly. after CPS or the utility boards or the mayor or whoever, um, and I wonder if just creating an alternative um, uh, collective. Exactly. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. I, I mean, that's the point I reached too. I'm just like, I'm so fucking tired of talking to you guys. Like, you don't listen anyway. Like we can go to you and present you. We can come up with policy platforms. You we have can to write do, it do the anyway. do the shit yourself anyway. <laughs> and then like it's just yeah. so it's. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm tired of putting my energy against them, and I want to right. reclaim In, that energy for the for our neighbors, for each other, for mm. you know, like 
what sense does it make to be down at City Hall if I don't even know, you know, what butterflies or bugs or birds are in my backyard, you know, if I don't have a relationship to the plants mm -hmm. and people, if I don't know the names of my neighbors. Um, so, yeah, I do. I really do think it is about, uh, like Nadia had said, like, I think it was Nadia, like taking the time or Kenny said it too, in a different way, like taking the time to think, taking the time to work on your own shit so that when you are in community with other people, you're not like hurting them and you're not hurting yourself while you're trying to fight injustice, taking the time to figure out a good way of act action. What's strategic, you know, like, uh, I'll say one more thing and then we'll move into the next section. Um, there's a, a, a thinker and a, a nonviolent um, activist whose work I like a lot, um, Kazu Haga. And he has an article called The Urgency of Slowing Down. Like the more in crisis that we are, like the more important it becomes actually to, to take the time, right? To do all of those things that you know, thinking, reflecting, so that act the actions that we do take are strategic and collective, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and don't destroy us. I just I was I was tapping Marisol. It's uh, three o'clock. Um, we got out of the gate at a kind of at a slowly, right? Which is fine. That's okay. Uh, we have a little list of things we're trying to get through. But we I, really want to get to people too. But uh, yeah, we want to have this a broader conversation, right? And I see like there's a couple of folks on the chat who who have you know been contributing there as well. Um, so I want to, if I could, just I know not everybody has even been on the site. Can I skip ahead and just show a quick scan of what we've been investing in? Um, and and did you want to kind of just do well, this? Let me ask people first. Would okay. you prefer that we just like jump into more discussion? Um, and then at the end, you know, we can give you a little tour of like some of the site new stuff that we've been doing on the site, or, or do you prefer that we do that first? So it's not up to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this quickly, I promise. Do you want Sight, sight, sight. Right. sight. Right okay, on, right on. cool. Because I did this. Like, so anyway, this is something some of y'all have been involved with me. Die helped us out of a couple technical uh, corners we were in. Um, I've had to kind of like uh, be I'm operating on the edge of my abilities, but I did want to um, so sit here. I'm just going to do a quick overview so you can see what it looks like and how it functions. So I know it's going to look a little bit different on my page, but I want to do a quick overview of uh, the deceleration website. Not everybody on this call, I'm sure, is, has even been on. You may know uh, Mati Solar myself from other work that we do. Um, uh, but like, you know, as I was saying, this kind of started out as a like a personal blog, a place to hold um, uh, my own uh, writing, uh, different news outlets and what have you. But um, anyway, um, and put the kind of like the the the, the mission or the, the the vision there words beyond despair for the earth and all of her families um at the top um you'll find a, an easy way to support uh our work um and the i've been focused on the last um couple of weeks getting ready for this broadcast just some of these menu bars uh, to show what's deeper into the site because sometimes you end up you're on a top page and you'll say okay so they were involved with words for birds uh, okay I'm on this event the uh, online uh, gathering this open house uh, or here's some you know uh, community science research opportunities uh, and those are the headlines you walk away with but there's you know obviously so much more behind the page um, We've cr tried to structure this pretty simple and not get too complicated. There's uh, underneath the opening slider with our featured stories uh, is uh, here uh, our, uh, our podcast. Um, we're working on production schedule ideas, you know, like, you know, maybe once once a month. Is that, you know, you know fresh enough for a new podcast I've got uh, or we have one uh, that we're going to be uh, publishing, I believe, on Monday. 
uh, that will take the place of this one from April 27th with uh, Carla Aguilar uh, on the Alamo and White Supremacy. Uh, we've got a band here for specifically to, to lift up those that are um, stories from the bioregion um, that we want to have a little more longevity on the top page. Uh, and beneath that, then we kind of just scroll down. It goes down into, you know, recent work, which is uh, kind of uh, just uh, kind of by, um, what would you say? Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. You know, the most recent stuff rises to the top, and then you can, can drill down and keep drilling down if you choose to. Um, or... Uh, what I've tried to do uh, with these menus is give folks shortcuts, and that's the, the point of menus, right? Um, but first, quickly, the top page. This is really one of the only pages that has this, so you'll find a link to our Facebook, uh, our Facebook community here, uh, where we need, still need to develop kind of a um, best practices for how we engage on Facebook, what we share there, how often we're there, as well as Twitter. Um, and we are on youtube but those are our three main social media channels trying not to spread ourselves out too much we do have a new uh events widget so here's the one for this event um hello my name is deceleration uh, you can ask for more information and eventually you get down here to where you can register or click on here to go live um this is a pretty nice uh events um uh plugin that that i'm learning about um below that um, this is again, you know, like uh, we want to highlight particular events. We don't want to be a clearinghouse, but we definitely do want to kind of like fill that charge, our niche um, uh, uh, for the community that, that we're finding kind of uh, uh, relationship with um, uh, these disaster committees that we've been targeting um, uh, politically uh, here. Uh, to bring more culture into it. So this is not a local uh, producer that I'm aware of, but um, ideally in the future we would have, you know, um, uh, you know, every week, you know, a new song and hopefully uh, at least something that's relevant to where we're at or hopefully a, a local or regional uh, artist. Where's the... Oh, it's the mic's turned off top reads of the week and then we like uh, Texas climate news waging nonviolence degrowth resilience text observer um, try to give them um, attention sometimes we actually grab one of their stories that are uh, creative commons uh, we've done different uh, messed around we're messing around with different um, Forms of reporting and analysis. Here's uh, the first ever research roundup uh, that Marisol put together uh, back in uh, February, um, and and I've been working on you know similar um, projects. Um, here's uh, so um, you know papers that have been published. She'll speak more about this, I'm sure. Um, and then, like I said, there's a, a relatedly kind of like I, I I had for a while was doing this uh, news roundup uh, the cultivator which uh, if we can you know get our funding up get our uh, production scheduled down you know every week there will be this bioregional newsletter uh, of kind of like that that is uh, carrying forward and and lifting up the most important stories uh, of the the week from an uh, environmental justice um, uh, perspective. Um, here's another SpaceX explosion um, on a protected uh, uh, natural area down there, Boca Chica. Um, and then the other thing I'll say, just uh, you know, spend some time when you do get to the site. Spend some time. We uh, have just recently created these resource menus uh, where you can see, you know, uh, our toxic polluters map the top climate polluters for the area. Um, this is pending uh, approval. We've got a lot to, uh, we don't wanna just rush out and highlight folks uh, before we understand kind of like the landscape. So we're working with our board to understand who, you know, who the best folks are to feature and highlight and promote and work with. 
in uh, permaculture and in the um, uh, community food ag world, uh, and then a, a winter storm survey. So there's a resource bar, there's an about bar where you'll find you know more about us, our community advisors, uh, writing guidelines that that Marisol got got together, uh, and uh, and again the support page, and lastly I'd say our reporting. Um, this is like brand, brand new. Two days ago, we're starting to break out um, these uh, uh, just topical areas. You know, it's looking back over what, what have we covered over the last, you know, three years, uh, and how do we how do we rein that in to, to very, very simple uh, kind of, of 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 language that can kind of carry a lot of um, carry a lot. So uh, we're doing that. We're exploring that now. So like. Um, you know, if we're writing something at the intersection of housing, um, well, here's some a couple take actions. There's a pandemic, uh, cancel the rent, and and here's uh, from one of our uh, uh, live streams, our deceleration live. And uh, I will say we do have, or we did for through the first seven or eight months of the pandemic, we were doing regularly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many did we do? Thirteen. That's where. We got through 13 of them, but these are like hour long, hour and a half um, uh, uh, little TV shows we were making um, and uh, had a lot of guests um, from across the community, music, artists, uh, and the like. Uh, our podcast, we're just coming out with, I believe, um, let's see, Carla was, what uh, number? 19 so our, our podcast 20 will be out monday and the last thing i'll say kind of about the side is you're just really interested in your feedback and folks and how it's working uh for you um and if there's you know other things we can uh integrate here and again down at the footer we tried to support about our advisors privacy policy and there's there's a lot to do still um but um that's the quick the quick runaround. What did I miss? Oh, the events. This is something I think for future conversations. Um, like I said, we do, we don't intend to be uh, uh, across the board, um, trying to be the hub for environmental news or, or environmental justice, or climate justice, or um, for the region. Uh, but we want to be very targeted and tailored. Um, it's a great it's a great little plugin. Uh, it's easy to use and integrates across with maps and all the rest. Um, uh, but for uh, for further conversation, thanks. Anyway, thanks, site, site. Thanks for that. Sorry for the fuzz. Um, I like pre-recorded that, and then I think I downloaded like an SD version or something through like it was complicated. Um, but we have been putting a lot into the site structure or I have been spending a lot of hours in the site structure. Um, and because when we do get our, like when we figure out kind of our relationships and the things that are really, uh, that are that, that, that we're hearing from our partners and from the community that actually um, can, can be um, effective in, in, in encouraging, then we'll, we'll, be, ready to, we'll, we'll be ready to roll. Um, and we do have certain things that we do, like we've got a new podcast that's coming out on Monday, uh, and which is an, in, uh, uh, an interview with um, an attorney who's been fighting CPS and CPS sued. Uh, the, you recall there was an effort to change the governance of CPS. CPS sued, uh, didn't let anybody know it was because it was class, they, they called it a class action suit because they were representing the bondholders. It, it, they only had to publish it in the back of the newspaper. They didn't have to tell anybody that they were like, jacking with our collective ability to organize uh, an initiative petition to change our city's charter. Um, anyway, so that's a big deal. It's ongoing uh, and we'll put that up soon. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's what I, I wanted to uh, make sure to get that out. And the other comment I'll make and I'll turn it back um, to Marisol and then turn it back into the circle uh, is that a lot of the work that I recognize that a lot of the work historically that I've put into deceleration, I've been able to do because I'm, uh, I'm a paid organizer, right? And so it reflects by nature, like 80% of what's going in there, I think probably reflects the work that I'm doing as an organizer, but not necessarily 
the work that the site or the mission or this effort is asking for you know so it's a it's a it's a question i have to ask myself and 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 then as we have this conversation to really think well do we need this much cps really you know um this much coal plant really um anyway but i'll stop there i know i feel you um yeah i think one of the constant i mean um we're, we're constantly like in ourselves we are already always experiencing the tension of like the pull is always to write about what's going wrong you know like that's the true, news true. roundup you know that's true, when true. you were reading the the mm-hmm. headlines and 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 that's so so some of the features that we're most excited about like developing the resources page as a a comprehensive guide for the region of like well, who 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 is do, who is starting cooperatives mm-hmm. who is doing food justice work who's doing permaculture who has um where are the bike shops where they can fix it you know they can build a bike for you uh, if you don't have resources for you know like so who's doing the work in the community on energy systems or or water protection um so that we're both letting people know about all of those ways to fight back but again we're also we're also a site not just for sharing information mm-hmm. about this bad stuff that's happening in our community but also sharing information about like what are people what are those networks of care that people are building actually now you know mm-hmm. um well that's uh, um yeah the thing that I mean, I would say the one that the 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 page on there for the on the resources doc that's locked right now, um, it I, I think it's community gardens and and farmers markets, but I think what that actually becomes is really is a, is a is a permaculture hub sort of a page that that people can spin off into a lot of other access points, or and even... that's something that Nadia has been really helping me uh, understand because that's not my background, the landscape that I've worked in. And, and through that conversation, we're already, I think, coming to understand that, wow, there are voices and there are communities and there are initiatives that aren't, aren't, uh, aren't being promoted or aren't, don't, aren't visible uh, in the ways that they should be. And the people that are visible that have a lot of the act, you know, it's like, you know, um, there's maybe something we can do about that. Yeah, and even bigger than permaculture, I think it's 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 really about like resilience and tra- and, and a just transition. So what, um, yeah, like what are people doing on all of those? What are the little projects that people have going on that we can help promote and make visible? Um, so back but to yeah. the, is so that yeah. the question that we're gonna open up the- Well, part of it, part of it, yeah. It, part of it that we want input on is like, you know, what are you working on that, mm can you know maybe you want to write something that you could send to us and we could publish or maybe you have a project that you feel fits kind of what we're trying to do and you want to make it more visible we can help with that um you know maybe um maybe you're doing more on the groundwork more direct action and you know you can send us press releases and we so we can stay on top of like what you're doing or maybe like if you see we're not if you have an event coming up and it's not on our calendar, you can ask us to put it on our, our calendar, right? Um, or recommend story ideas. You know, we just wanted to get input from from folks in the community that have an interest in what we're doing um, that overlaps with yours. And um, so, yeah, if you, there, I think we have a small enough group that we can kind of just go like round robin, really. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe just let us know more about what you work on and. Um, you know what's useful mm. about what we're doing for what you're doing or what you know what are we not doing that could be useful for what you're doing um or really any other ideas or thoughts or questions or suggestions or collaborations um now's the moment I like kamala's kamala's comment i've been thinking about deceleration in recent months and in order to change directions you have to decelerate so thanks kamala yeah. that's that's what we're asking for sure. So maybe we can just, uh, do you want to go to gallery view? Does that sure. make sense? Yeah. And so, yeah, community, community efforts, community needs. I see Tim, Tim, you snuck in, uh, snuck in midway. Tim, I, I will say just produced a massive um, report on energy justice and energy racism. I'll use, I don't know if you use those words, but in San Antonio, 
uh, and there's just so much material there uh, that has been that's helped inform uh, the the collective community work or and, and the energy justice struggle. So welcome, good to see you. Oh, can I mention really quickly, especially please let us know also if you are involved with any mutual aid efforts. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot, especially after the storm in February, like there's just a bubbling up of a lot of very small kind of informal networks. Mm -hmm. And we would like to be able to um, include that in our resources page, you know? Yeah, there's some good, there's some good, good there's a Google Doc, I think people have started to kind of like gel around. Um, uh, but yeah. So maybe uh, Tom, he's he's first yeah. in that this direction. OK, yeah. go for it. Oh, can you unmute him? Uh, I, I think, Tom, you have to unmute yourself. Forgot to mute myself. I started writing for the um, Country Weekly here back in the 90s. And the, the theme I took up was growth is coming. You better get ready for it, because if you're not ready for it, it'll control you rather than the other way around. And so I did pieces about native grasses, the river, new breeds of cattle, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just saying that there was something of value here worth preserving. And um, so, and now uh, after time has passed, uh, I'm still here. I was in East Texas for about six years, but I've been here since 79. Uh, I'm watching exactly my worst paranoid dystopian fantasies about what was going to happen to the hill country, presumably one of the beloved areas, ecosystems, regions, whatever, of Texas, the fond memories of uh, the Frio River and, you know, camps, you know, when you're in high school or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, it's just, it's just getting, it's getting torn apart and trashed. It's, it's getting just, you know, demolished it's, you know and it's a pattern all over the world as we know i mean this could be this could be the amazon for you know uh it's the same kind of processes um and uh what i you know wonder about uh, and i know this is the kind of question you're raising is that advancing these issues and pointing to you know what's happening right in front of us doesn't seem to really sink in um and uh, the responses, the, the, the political responses appear really fascinating, uh, but they're ultimately ineffective. Um, and so, you know, so again, I, I think this is the question you're raising with deceleration is there's got to be a way out, you know, if you don't want to yield to despair. Um, mm -hmm. And what that is, I, I'm not clear about at all, but that's, that's the, thing, the thing I've seen I see worth pursuing. And just let me add on the top of that, I had a, I just recall very closely a conversation that uh, I had with a friend who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. And he'd been a doctor. He was a scion of a famous South Texas ranching family. And he would uh, eventually he wound up in Doctors Without Borders and he practiced mostly in Kazakhstan and uh, Peru and a few other places. And we were talking, he was back here and purchased a ranch in this area. And I said, I thought we had the carry capacity on this planet sometime right about World War II. Um, and he, I was surprised his response was, no, I think it was before that. Um, so that is another way of looking at it. That, you know, we met the enemy and the enemy is us. Um, we don't know our limits as a species um, and we're, you know, doing great damage. Um, so how do you appeal to a species that does that and doesn't seem to be able to learn from the past and what have you? So I, I'm just raising the same issue you raised at the outset. You know, why is it that you can't say these things to people and stuff doesn't start happening in a more dynamic way? Um, so anyway, that's enough of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let me go on to Kenneth. Oh, yeah. Do you want to come in, Kenneth? Um, I don't... You're welcome. I, I do want to say. Yeah. You want to... I do want to go say ahead. Just go ahead, might as well. Quickly, the importance of um, 
questioning whether it's really humanity in the aggregate mm -hmm. or you know us as a, people as a species or whether it's historical systems of power you know that have developed largely since capitalism colonialism since in a certain time in a certain place for certain reason to the benefit of certain groups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that really i mean to me it seems i think we should try to be specific when we can yeah and i, I also know that that's a it's a it's a pit to, to get into I, I see someone liz has to get off at 3 30 and that's when we're supposed to close um so um let's uh those are great talk places to to launch conversation, but yeah, I want to sure. um, come back come back to Kenneth and and, and anyone else who kind mm -hmm. of is thinking about projects and that may be intersecting or encouraged along or that that this work could support. Well, thank you, and you know it is really fresh to see y'all out there. Um, um, kind of like Edward Abbey said, you know, shortly after birth, I found myself a displaced person inside this thing we call civilization. And uh, I wouldn't know where to begin right now. I'm going to need to go pretty soon also back to my park. But um, y'all are on my hero list. Let me just tell you that as far as local heroes. Um, yes, there's a lot of work to be done. It took 10,000 more or less years to create what you know, this growth imperative, and uh, it has to be re uh, reversed. It, it has to, and or it's just going to default. I mean, it will someday. The question is uh, how it's going to happen. Um, I restore small lots of land. That, that's what I do. That's one of the hands-on thing that I do. Uh, bringing in native plants a lot of times, and I, and I do this very, it's very slow with my hands. I don't have large equipment, heavy equipment. And a lot of times, if you just, uh, leave the land alone and don't trim it and don't cut it. You, you see who wants to come back and you let them come back. And that's what I do. I live adjacent to the, the local post office where I live and, and I've rewilded the, the west side of that post office. Uh, one thing I'd like to do with pieces of plots that I work on is uh, here's a train coming by. It's gonna drown me out here shortly. I really wanna work with uh, grasses because, you know, and you know, a lot of us know this, but where I live, where we live, many of us, um, this place used to be called Mustang Prairie before it became uh, Fernando and then Lacoste. And I know that's not that exciting. That's still a name that came from, you know, the dominant culture and Anglo culture, but uh, uh, that's what's supposed to be here. And I'm really interested everywhere I go, uh, I work outdoors and I'm constantly thinking about, uh, I reconstruct the landscape and and that is what I want to bring back. I'm a longtime educator and um, over 20 years teaching here and abroad, uh, social studies and history usually. I'm a certified school principal. I haven't gone down that road and used that accolade yet um, because I think teachers largely, we go in for the right reasons but those aren't really the reasons they want us there in the first place. And like Marty Soul was talking about earlier, you, it really goes up to high places where, you know, we're basically manipulated and uh, we have to go down these paths and we have to love this growth imperative. And I always like to, you know, kind of just tack on there is, or else, and that or else can take on, you know, hundreds or thousands of possibilities, you know, you. You don't get the promotion. You don't get the job. You, your child, your child doesn't get into X college, and you know, and on and on. But uh, I love what Leah Keith says. She's a feminist, uh, environmentalist, writer. She said that uh, you know, she says that basically everything we are up against is 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 an educational issue. It's it's an informational issue. Anyone who studied journalism and and uh, um, marketing. We all know what Edward Bernays did to has done and synthesized all the work of the the great uh, you know the philosophers and the psychologists who studied uh, uh, um, uh, crowd psychology, and that is what we're up against. And uh, I really don't have much more to say except that uh, I love what you do. I've been following you for about a year. And um, I'd like to see if we could cross paths in some way. And if any of you out there, you ever want to come out to Casterville, the, the Casterville Regional Park, I'm on the Medina River five days a week, Wednesdays through Saturdays, come by and say, hey, in person sometime. I'm a lot more uh, jittery when, I'm in, when it's in person, but uh, it's been nice seeing all of you and uh, hope to see you all again sometime. On the river. 
Can you? Can you? Is that me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I I, uh, I take care of the park there. I'm in charge of the 126 acre park there along the Medina River. I work for the city of Castle. Someone was just telling me that uh, they wanted to go visit that park. So now we're going to have to do it for sure. Coming. Yeah. And Medina is the neglected river of, of San Antonio. <laughs> um, Marie, uh, did you want to come in? I'm sorry that we, we, we I feel like I, I, how many times I overspoke and I got us in this situation where we're now having a great dialogue. Um, but Marie, yeah, if you want to um, come in and. Well, I want to echo what Kenneth said. You are my heroes as well. And I am so grateful to be here and uh, to hear what you're doing. I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, one is um, I, I really feel that um, you provide an excellent opportunity and I hope more in the future to speak from our heart and from our spirit instead of focusing on our head. I think, you know, there are so many smart people working on environmental justice and working on climate change issues, but I see a real hunger to really speak um, from our hearts and to, un uh, to talk about uh, our history and, um, uh, I, 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 we're doing so much work in, in, in our heads. And so it's wonderful to uh, talk uh, uh, about our souls and the hurts in doing this kind of work. Um, and you, and you, you hit it on the nail. It's very painful at times. The other is that uh, I um, am working, I'm a co-host of a podcast, Abuelas en Acción, and uh, we are an affiliate of um, Familias en Acción in Portland, Oregon. Um, and we are doing multi-generational work. There are a lot of people that are my age and older who want to be involved, but they don't know how to be involved and they've retired or semi-retired. And in my opinion, are leading kind of boring lives and want to do more. Uh, and so... Uh, it would be great um, to provide a forum for, um, you know, uh, older people to participate uh, and, um, and, and they have time as well. Uh, and I also want to just, um, you both know this, but any opportunity that we can uh, have to collaborate with you from Oregon, uh, we have a lot of progressives in Oregon, uh, progressive Latinos that um, have family here in South Texas and are wanting to collaborate in any way possible to support um, the work going on. Marie, can you put the um, link to your podcast in the chat? Oh, Is it okay. Way? okay. Yeah. Happy to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I love that. I love that comment about uh, connecting with people and having like this relational um, process, right? And, and, I, and, I, and I wonder too, there's probably a number of folks on this call that, that do this work, but through um, plants, right? Through working the, the garden, it seems like such an entryway mm -hmm. to these conversations. And one of the one of the things I was trying to accomplish, I was emailing with Nadia. I hope it's okay to share just our our, our exchange. But you know, I, I went out. And I said I want to I want to create this site uh, or a landing page that you know that talks about um, people doing kind of permaculture projects, restoring soils, um, just all the the feedback loops and all that and. And everything I was finding were kind of like, there was a little kind of like bro culture almost. Uh, and, and I knew other people doing this work. Um, and, I, and, and I was, you know, and I just wasn't seeing a presence online. And, and I, I talked to Brian about it too. And he was kind of like, yeah, I, he's got a system. He said, well, I can, I can give it this much time. This is my technical knowledge. I know how to plant my phone. I do this thing. Um, but I like thinking about it. It's like through, through the, um, through COVID, like we, 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 we did a lot of like, like practice on each other a lot. And I think, and Mati Sol's done now, I think three different, like one was like, I don't know if it was the Chili Paquins or one was the, you know, how to make, um, Nepales. Uh, but, um, 
these are like places that, and, and I noticed, and so Nadia sent me, yeah, trying to find videos and I found one, I think Metro Health maybe produced um, with the, um, the, the flower. The yucca. The, yeah, yucca. And um, it's a really sweet video. It reminded me of kind of like what we were doing. And you're also like dealing, you're working with, with older folks and that historic memory. You're, you're getting into like, like, like native histories, mm -hmm. challenging colonial, you know, stories and, and food ways and whatever else. So um, I'd like, yeah, any, any thoughts people have on those kinds of projects, we may not be the ones that carry it. We could be the ones that film it. We can film it. We could support it. We could promote it. Uh, and maybe we can help, you know, design elements if that's useful. Um, um, Jackie. Jackie. Hey, you guys. Sorry, I was late um, having internet problems and my daughter had my phone and then I was like, oh man, so I had to get the phone back from her. <laughs> yeah, at and you know, right now out in my area. But um, so I think it's really, really, really important to um, get young kids involved. Um, they don't understand a lot of what's going on and um, when, we, when my biology students finished uh, with STAR, I've been using this opportunity to talk to them um, about, you know, climate change and things that they can do and things that they can be a part of. But, you know, you can really great um, um, Losing your audio, Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. It, I, I was saying it would be really great, um, you know, if we can, you know, light a fire um, within them to, to to do something because this is really their future. You know, this is like my daughter gets upset and my son, we have these conversations and to have um, something to be part of, um, I would really like to help create something like that. Um, I'm, I'm moving schools again. <laughs> I'm gonna be working here at Highlands with the Texans Can Academy. Um, mm -hmm. I was over at main campus, the old St. Francis uh, Academy campus um, and so, um, you know, wherever I'm working with kids, I, I really just want, you know, to use science really as an opportunity to um, educate them on what's really going on um, right now. I want to keep being able to teach biology. And the only way to do that is to keep the life, you know. Um, yeah. So I also really want to become sustainable in my own home. I want, you know, to catch this rain. I want to, you know, get solar panels and I would like to be off the grid and, you um, um, I don't know that we can do that legally. I don't think we can, but um, it would be great to, to be able to do that. And then to get, once we get a, you know, a student group going, then get our student, you know, and maybe have some kind of mutual aid where it's, it's about helping each other become sustainable type of stuff. So those are things that I would like to work on um, that I haven't really started working on yet, but I've been thinking about for a very long time. Um, so that's all I have. That's awesome. And actually, I was um, somebody who was wanted to be here today, but is getting ready for a big um, puppetry conference tomorrow. Moby Warren um, was I don't know if you know her work, but I thought of her right away when you were saying you wanted to develop something for young kids because she she does these amazing um, she makes the puppets mm -hmm. and then she she creates the scripts and then um, she performs them and all of the puppets that she makes are like, it's all very science. Mm -hmm. She's a, a retired math teacher, but she's also a poet and she does the puppeteering stuff. So all of her puppetry is about making, um, she does like native species of insects and then she has human creatures as well, um, puppets and then they interact in there. The, all of the skits are about like environmental or yeah. climate or native plant issues. So maybe there's some way that like that can be put together uh, into a project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that would be, that would be great to connect with people to, that are already doing it and then just mm -hmm. kind of working with them and growing from there. Yeah. Cool. Well, we have your email address, so maybe we can we can connect we can connect you and Moby and and figure something out. Mm -hmm. Yes, please do. Awesome, thank you. I like this comment. Uh, thank you, Luke. Um, just um, how do we build these alternative narratives in our storytelling and don't get hung up on this climate dystopia? Yeah. Um, and uh, you had kind of a think a thought I don't know about that book review that you were just looking at last night I think oh 
It's, I mean, yeah, it, 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 not here to answer the question, but it's, it's a great question. Too long of a story. Mm -hmm. But basically, I think it's just about, yeah, like taking our focus and our yeah. energy away from uh, from from the people that are doing the damage mm -hmm. and putting it into um, the neighbors that we care about, you know, our family members that we care about, our larger family of relatives, mm -hmm. um, animals and plants which I think, so it's a matter of like finding the kind of work that it also kind of like restores you in the process of restoring the world, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, it's good to also, I think the, you know, I'm kind of a, a bit of a hermit, you know, I mean, and, and, and certainly like this COVID year didn't uh, improve on that, but I think the, the choosing community um, can go, can, can, can be a big thing in that to challenge each other, to challenge each other to love the world as we have it right now, right? And not to like, I think there's this idea of like, yes, we are in a, in a mass extinction event. True, absolutely. And all the things we can like catalog and, we're, and when there's people on this call that are very, very good at cataloging, you know, and myself as well, like everything that's going on, everything's going wrong, just, um, but if we can't allow ourselves to first fall in love um, with the land, and then somebody quoted Edward Abbey earlier, and I think there's great quotes from 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 Abbey. But um, I don't like Abbey. No, well, she doesn't like <laughs> Abbey, but there's some great Abbey quotes that I would. Um, anyway, I'll stop there because no, you're okay. I can't remember what I was saying. Um, I'm sorry. To... I was just saying just that we we live in flux, right? I mean. I can't say like what comes on the other end of like, of like a collapse that profoundly impacts the human species that, that in, 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 in along with, you know, everything else. I mean, there's this, there's this flux and then there's, there's, I don't even, I don't want to get too like, like cosmic out there or whatever, but things collapse, like entire systems collapse and then pass through, you know, the black hole through the wormhole pop out and something brand new is there. Things are constantly, constantly collapsing and arising um and in our own lives um and in anybody who's dealt with like health like health issues like chronic health issues you know that like you you live in that constant you know arising and and subsiding and um but i do think like that that's a huge question i've gone on too long but um it's an opportunity uh for for us for we just replanted the front yard with poll all pollinating plants that Marisol did all this research and we got all this stuff. And immediately we're like, you know, we're like, we've learned like 12 new species of beetles or bugs and then all these kinds of things. And um, it's, it's as if all of the, this, this, this other story didn't exist because that's our attention is here. Um, and um, anyway. Can I ask? Um... <laughs> Check. <laughs> Good. No, I'm checking myself. Um, I did want to, uh, but we do recognize three thirty-eight people got to start hopping off, and we've held you way too long. And um, in a few minutes, our toddler's coming back, yeah. so that'll be the hard end. <laughs> but, um, I, I did uh, want to ask Luke, um, just since you are coming from like outside of this area, um, yeah, just I don't know if you want to share any more about um just your interest or your work or like what you where you're at sure can you hear me okay yeah great um yeah well uh deceleration is is super new to me um i found you through the degrowth movement um and then yeah. found this event and connected really quickly um and uh yeah so mostly i just wanted to to learn more and I, i'm sorry now that i'm, I'm seeing all you guys connect and getting really inspired by you that I'm not there and can't really network and because you know I'm really I'm thinking about uh always the the positive alternatives that both of you have said in response to this um specifically in a community sense you know I'm thinking about police and prison abolition too and and just all of these interconnected uh yeah. issues yeah seem like they're, they're coming back to positive alternatives in the community and it's tricky as I'm, I'm also kind of relocating and, and looking at other places to be. And I'm, I'm questioning, you know, what is my role in a community, the community I'm in, how can I use my storytelling to uh, mm. 
always, you know, challenge, as I said in the chat, how theater has upholded uh, oppressive structures, uh, you know, in the, as they operate as, you know, nonprofits as well. They're also in that industrial mm -hmm. complex and, and uh, how they uh, uh, really influence our values. I think that's what's really shifted my thinking is how art and what we consume affects what we think. And so there's, I'm feeling a lot of responsibility uh, in not necessarily telling the right stories, but being a lot more intentional about how I'm doing it, where I'm doing it, who I'm doing it with. Uh, I'm a cis white man as well. So like, how do I uh, take part without, you know, taking the mic? Um, so this whole year has really been a big learning, learning phase for me. I've had to, yeah, as you said, decelerate. And so I'm really checking myself, uh, slowing down and dealing with the urgency of, of <laughs> slowing down while everything's falling apart. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate what you've, what you've said and just happy to be here. You sure. Likewise. And, um, we have your email address. I'll send you, I mean, the folks that I know that are doing some really interesting like theater stuff, um, uh, I aren't where you are either, but, um, uh, but I'll send you some, some folks that like, maybe there's a connection that'd be made. Um, what else was I going to send you? Oh yeah. I'll send you the link to that. Um, the urgency of slowing down, um, piece. It's just like he's well, just we, a great thinker we do that for for everybody i know i don't want to like we're gonna camp here and people sometimes people feel obligated to stay on a call when the call is over and i think we have an obligation to y'all also to end a call um close to when we um Respect. said we would so um but we'll follow up by email we'll share some documents um i'm gonna keep doing this because i think um um because i think it's magic um and uh, anyway, yeah, well, and, and I think there are some folks that may want to like have a standing call and just think about how we can create new systems. Um, but please reach out at any time, um, check the site, uh, email us uh, if you need anything at all um, relatedly. And uh, just a lot of love and respect to those who are able to be here with us. I'm just typing a little note. Pat, thank you for bringing up the limits to growth oh, yeah. uh, report. That's actually one of the foundational texts of the degrowth movement. Mm -hmm. So sure. we, we didn't get into it today, but thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, we'll, we'll pick, pick up on, maybe pick up on that, you know, where we can actually talk actually like some key degrowth principles and uh, research roots. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, are we saving the chat? I'm just trying to go back and find that video link y'all sent earlier. <laughs> It should be saved. I want to say like when uh, we send out the record or like when we get the recording, we yeah. have access to that and we can. I'm pretty sure we can send it out. And so, uh, yeah, when I close this, it should save the chat we with the video. And what was the document itself that we're. You're asking about the um, the videos, right? Like the degrowth videos or. Oh, I just grabbed it. It was something from the BBC. I found it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's one of them. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh, upper right. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it right now. Yeah. Save chat. chat. Thank you, Laura. And, and we'll follow up with you as well. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. See you next time.